Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. That with all of this excitement, everything going on here, is this news, this latest Trump committing treason news story getting just completely lost in the news cycle? Speaking of protesters, you know, he's apparently trying to influence Netanyahu to not do a ceasefire because it would help Kamala Harris. I mean, Randy Singer said asking a foreign leader to keep a war going, allowing more death, more pain and suffering for human hostages to help his election chances is a new low for Trump that should surprise nobody on earth. I mean, (laughs) but kind of a big effing deal, right? Yeah. And the only way that we found out about it, it was sort of slipped uh, by someone from uh, PBS NewsHour. Uh, and it's just like as a side comment, yeah. it's like, wait, what? <laughs> Donald Trump has been calling Netanyahu. Look, when he came here and went to Mar-a-Lago, that was a coordination meeting. That was yeah. Netanyahu. Look, I'm going to be quite frank. You guys know that I, uh, I understand the Israeli perspective on this war. I understand why it's being fought. I personally think this war could have been won and over four months Thank you. ago. Wow. Thank you. Give Hamas this victory coming into first in October 7th, the first anniversary, will be one year. One yeah. year that they have defied you. And there's only one way to explain that. All right? I mean, not Brooklyn, trying very hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Brooklyn, Dad, talk about that for a minute because that's the thing everybody's rooting for that's wanted to divide Democrats is the Gaza issue. And, you know, here we've got, as Malcolm said, Netanyahu's a far-right crook like Trump who's trying to stay out of jail. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants to keep this going to stay out of jail and to get Donald Trump back in office so he can just flatten Gaza. My my tweet today was uh, good morning and happy Wednesday to everyone who agrees that if it's true that Donald Trump is colluding with Netanyahu to prevent a ceasefire, that Merrick Garland needs to get up off his Thank you. And thank you. Indict him immediately. Yeah, I mean, for uh, violating the Logan Act. And how is it just? How is this normal? Thank you. How is this normal when a former former president is sticking his nose in the United States business and working against our best interests? Yeah, Uh, Wajahat Ali. um, By the way, Malcolm Huno said, kind of a big deal. Trump, a private citizen, is reaching out to a foreign leader, in this case Netanyahu, and illegally asking him not to end this disastrous war before the elections because it will help. Paris, you know, major headline news type of stuff. Yep. But, you know, they're too busy talking about, you know, <laughs> clutch the pearls. Is Kamala, you know, trolling Trump too hard or whatever it is. The tan suit. Yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. A-level you know, trolling. It was beautiful. But Malcolm, get, just give us your thoughts on this. On, you know. Well, you know, it's not the first time he's done it. You guys recall right. minutes after the 2016 election was called, he was already out there. Jared Kushner was meeting with mm-hmm. the Russians. Yeah. Asking for a secret crypt- encrypted communications network so that U.S. intelligence wouldn't hear what he and the Russians were talking about. Well, what's his name? Mike Flynn went and met yeah. the Russian ambassador and was telling them to, uh, you know, that the United States is going to do this. Just hold off for another 30 days after our inauguration. All of this is illegal. And for Bibi Netanyahu, people are dying. Palestinians are dying. Israelis are dying. Hostages are dying and being executed. Yeah. So I don't understand. Now I understand why, you know, Galan, you know, left the government because these guys are, are showing that they are willing to use the entire stability of the Middle East for his own personal purposes. Yeah. And, and yeah. God knows, God knows what he's get elected and, and pull him out. Yeah. yeah, God knows what he's cooking up with Putin. I still keep talking about him saying there's definitely going to be a terrorist attack oh on American God. soil before the election. I'm like, what do you know that we yeah. don't, right? Yeah. Right. You, and if you, you know you, something, tell us. Yeah. October surprise. Right. Yeah. That's what he's I thinking. mean, John Pavlovich said Trump is preventing a ceasefire in Gaza. He is a global cancer. I mean, you know, Malcolm, you talk about that all the time. He is not just a cancer on America. He is, I mean, as was it uh, Barack and Obama saying, the world is watching to see mm-hmm. what we're going to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. All of this has a knockdown effect. And here's the, here's the worst part of this entire discussion. And you guys know I've written about this in at least five books. Yes. Um, it's because the people who are on our side, who are decent and dignified and think that the system is running stable as it is, don't you know they don't really understand the impact of project 2025 and their plans requires them one to win 
And then two, they don't care if they don't win anyway. So that what yeah. you're seeing is you're seeing actions that are building in a crescendo where Trump is coordinating on the basis that he's going to rule this country in another uh, 80 some odd days. And he's Aye. got global leaders, Putin, Netanyahu, doing things which are against the interests of the United States, but which is in their personal interest. But they need these things checked, listed and done before the election so that the night of the election, we all know what the strategy is going to be. Steve Bannon's strategy of they are going to call the election for themselves that night. Result yeah. damned. And Let's take a happy moment, together. though, to remember that Steve Bannon's currently in jail. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't, does he have to pay quarters to, to watch the, the television? I, uh, think he you know, I don't even think, I don't even I think, think he gets TV a, time. He's going to be doing a lot more things to uh, get them to change the channel. <laughs> well, Malcolm, you cover the books for adults, and Brooklyn Dad cover the, the books for kids. This is fan his it's first adorable. book was fantastic, The Littlest President. This is the Bigliest Loser. Look at these <laughs> illustrations. This is the best. This is how you raise sexy liberals. This is look at this with the throwing ketchup. Beautiful <laughs> <laughs> for framing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> talk to us. Talk to us a little bit about this and the inspiration for doing a, a follow up. Uh, well. I had to. I had to do a follow-up. Um, and this one, actually... So the first book uh, came out before we knew that Joe Biden was our nominee. Mm -hmm. And it came out... Uh, I was working on it and published it before COVID actually, like, really, right. you know, s sank into the American psyche and, and started killing off thousands and thousands of people. And in The Bigliest Loser, I do cover that. Mm -hmm. And it's important, very important to me because... Despite the fact that The Bigliest Loser is a humorous book, it's very funny. It's got a <laughs> lot of funny pictures in it. Um, but it's this very serious content. Sure. I feel like uh, too many Americans are ready to gloss oh, over. It's 20 Governor Whitmer. They're Sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Rich. We love you so much. We love you. We love Hello. you so much, Governor Whitmer. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, God, I'm such a star effer. <laughs> such a political nerd. Uh, there are too many Americans who are ready to gloss over the last year of Donald Trump's presidency, the disastrous last year where he totally botched the, right. the, the response to COVID. Right. Yeah. And he can't get away with that. No. And giving him a second term would let him get away with screw, totally screwing the country. So that's covered in the book. Yeah. The hopefulness is covered in the book. Mm -hmm. And this was originally supposed to be published in June. But there was something, something was messing with my, with my brain. I couldn't, f I couldn't finish the uh, right. content. Yeah. And as soon as Joe passed the torch to Kamala, I was like, bingo, let's Got go. It. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. It's We're like back. the whole country just lit up like yeah. a Christmas tree. Yeah. Malcolm, you know, I, I was going to say, this is why you and Brooklyn Dad and like Jojo from Jurors, all our beloveds, this is why I know how effective you are, because the MAGAs are so mean to you guys on, oh, <laughs> on social media. Yes, right. And, you know, it is, it is, I know, somebody tweeted at JoJo after she was at Sexy Liberal, oh, are you going to go hit up the, the mobile abortion van, ho-ho? <laughs> like, just, yeah, but I mean, when you yeah. were saying before the break about Barack Obama, as he always ah, does, yeah. calling us to our better angels. Talk a little bit about that, because it's hard, isn't it? Because <laughs> I'm like, but they're such douchebags, Barack. Yeah. So do we we have to be. <laughs> I, I thought he made a brilliant uh, analogy talking about uh, how sometimes your grandparents that you love dearly, they say things that are a little bit cringe because yeah. they're, they haven't caught up with right. the times. The times are moving quickly. There are things that are happening. There are political correctnesses that people are not ready to embrace yet. They're just not there yet. My mother, who just passed at 100, um, when she saw a picture of me and Frangela, she asked if Francis was Chinese. And <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, Mom, no, she's African American. Do you know any black people, Mom? <laughs> Holy shit, Chinese people. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Malcolm, you are a former Republican. You're a service, you know, oh, obviously, no. so you and your whole family serve this country. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, you look at the embodiment of like Tim Walls, go, there are ways we can connect as human beings. I mean, Barack Obama always makes me want to be a better person. Absolutely. And I got to tell you, you know, um, I, I, the, the way that they spoke last night on the floor, every few minutes, 
you know, it was one of these Hallmark guy cry moments. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's onions. It says someone's cutting onions. I'm yeah. not crying. You made the tough spy cry. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe you said that. Excuse me here. I'm not crying. All right. Crying. Someone on social media just called uh, Malcolm the F word for gay man. Okay. Again? <laughs> hey, let me tell you. There's a lot of guys in Soho, London that would uh, wish that were true. All the ladies at all the ladies at Fleet Week tell me different. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you what's really funny about this is that you, you know when I was watching that last night and Doug Emhoff was up there describing his beautiful blended family and mm-hmm. how Kamala became you know got, you know a Mamala and yeah. I just kept mm-hmm. thinking, good God, we are good people. Yeah, we yeah. are people of of good heart. We are decent, we are kind, we are compassionate, we are caring. And yes, I get a little shouty and use the F bombs all the time because I'm your I'm your 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 spirit your sit your spirit animal. Uh, you know, uh, but these guys on the other side, I'm sorry folks, they just weirdos. Real yeah. Oh god, weirdos. so weird. I and love that that's stuck. That oh, weird. so that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but to your point, Malcolm, about, uh, I mean, so many ugh, amazing moments from Michelle Obama, but to your point about racism, I love she said, we cannot indulge our anxieties about whether this country will elect someone like Kamala instead of doing everything we can to get someone like Kamala elected. I mean, right. those were some of the fears. Remember, Malcolm, when all the fantasy football and, ooh, open convention and whatever, oh, I don't know, black woman, can we, you know, it's like, you know, President Biden, God bless him, you know, mm-hmm. it was said, go. Mm-hmm. Can, can I this speak is, on on, yeah. on Kamala Harris? Yes, please. Because they, I I kind of sensed before leading up to Joe uh, stepping aside, and passing it to Kamala Harris. I sensed that something was something was going on, and um, you know there were all these people coming out and saying, "Oh, he's too old," and you know maybe these people are suggesting he step aside. I it felt to me like they didn't want Kamala Harris, and so I was kind of right. relieved. I was relieved mm-hmm. that, you know, Joe said, this is who That would have blown endorsing. up the party. Yeah. If we no. stepped over you the know, first sitting black woman vice president, that would have blown up yep. the party. This took yeah. me back to the, what was it, the 2019 K-Hive period, where a lot of people were coming after her with knives, you yeah. know, and just describing her as not black. There were these blacks out there, you know, and I was just like, what, what is she doing here other than merely existing? Yeah, yeah. They yeah. hate so much, and you're right. There was a cadre of people who might have been in the, you know, um, not Trump Republican side, who were saying, "Now we have an open convention, and we choose someone else." She's already on the ticket. She yeah. already got 81 million votes. Thank you. She it was wasn't a coup. Elected. It wasn't yeah. a coup. How do you have a coup from someone who I was? Keep- actually elected and also she got the delegates malcolm they didn't have to go with her she got the it's just she got them in record time she's the harris in biden harris (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) wait a minute all right wait 